Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Angel here on the Mill Scene Division. I'm here with Team 604 Quicksilver, winners of the Sacramento and Ron Monterey Bay Regional. This team has an amazing launcher, amp, intake, and some cool things that they're doing with software. So let's move on to 604 Quicksilver on this episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Let's head over to Ethan, who's gonna to talk to us a little bit about the strategic design of this robot, Ethan. Yeah, so coming off of our game analysis from kickoff, we realized that once again, this was another full field cycling game. And so that means that we need to focus on being fast. One of the things we have less control over is a drivetrain. So, I mean, the robot can only move so fast. So we really put all of our efforts into making all of the other actions as fast as possible. So this means a couple of things for us. One of them as a counterpoint or a, a side point to driving fast is we wanna be able to drive under the stage. We figured out that driving under the stage would open another lane for us and would open, like, give us more flexibility in our cycles and ultimately help with our plan of getting more cycles. What this also means for us is we want to be able to score from partially under the stage. So the robot should be able to be in a scoring position when we're under the stage and not have to rely on like a driver to put an arm down or fancy software to keep the robot from driving into the stage, essentially. Another thing we wanted to focus on was intaking fast at the source. So what that means for us is we want to have a really big tolerance for a driver. And what that means is a really wide intakes, which we'll talk more about later. The last thing that we wanna talk about is our launcher. We knew that having a launcher that can shoot from further away would help us by reducing our driving time. So when we were looking at launcher designs, we wanted to prioritize long distance. Okay, now I have that. So interesting to see the thoughts that went behind the design of this robot. So let's move up, let's deep dive into the individual components and let's start with Yuan, who's gonna talk to us about our, your intake here. All right, specifically concerning our intake, there are three major criteria we had this season. We wanted it to be a full width intake just because of auto and how we had to, we wanted to be competitive and we felt, we figured that a full width intake is the way to do that. Our second criteria is that we wanted it to be compliant and we wanted it to be durable. And also our last criteria is that we needed it to auto center. When we were prototyping our shooter, we figured it's easiest to do it during our intake. All right, so starting off with the durability, we decided this season to make it a compliant type intake because in previous seasons, it, we had built it rigid and we figured that this year we should try compliant. So we built it mostly out of polycarb and 3D printed parts. So all of the rollers are polycarbonate, uh, two inch, and they're very thin and they're also dead axle so that the shaft inside wouldn't get bent. And also the dead axle is cut short so that if we really hit super hard against a wall or another robot, the shaft inside won't bend because other robots we've seen, although the outside polycarb roller won't bend, we've seen that other robots can have the, the hex shaft and side bend. And it's very bendy. It's extremely good with side to side hits. So we'll move over to the mechanum wheels, which is how we auto center our robot. So the mechanum rollers may seem very unintuitive at first since they're all pointed in very weird directions, but it's actually a lot of thought went into this because of how there's a hole in the node. Since mechanical rollers only work when the game piece is up against an object, we put funnels on the intake. And when we roll this in, we can see that the note only touches the mechanics that are pointing towards the center. So that when we start indexing, it'll move it towards the center without squishing the note. Because if we put mechanics only pointing towards the center on both sides, it would crush the note sideways. And that, helps, that also helps us set up for our launcher and shooter mechanism, since it's only acceptable in the center of the robot. So talking about your shooter and launcher me uh, mechanism, let's move over to Dristy, who's gonna go over that for us. So we wanted to design our launcher to be able to shoot into both speaker and the amp. So the way we do that is um, we have these rollers to shoot into the speaker. And so um, we did a lot of prototyping to come up with this final asymmetrical design. And so originally we had two uh, symmetrical sides with two rollers on each side. And so we found that the results were inconsistent. Sometimes the note would fly wobbly or the other times it would spin really nicely and go exactly where we want it to. 
So after looking at high motion uh, video footage, we found that um, when the note was um, flew accurately and nicely, it had um, jerked to a certain side and contacted one set of rollers first. So through this, we um, tested a bunch of different configurations and found that having uh, one set of rollers be closer to the center was the way to enlist the best spin on the note. So is it possible that we can just get a demonstration of uh, how the entire process is from intaking the note to uh, launching or shooting in the air? Well, very cool. Now let's uh, move over to Abhay, who's gonna go over uh, your climber and your trap mechanism. So while an incredibly strong playoff game is important, we know also that it's equally as important to be able to trap. As you can see here, this launcher mechanism is also put onto an elevator. This elevator is important because we came into this competition season knowing that this, even it, like, we came into the competition season knowing that our robot would have to extend upwards to be able to score into the trap. Now, let's take a look at our climber mechanism specifically. Can you deploy the climber upwards? Okay. Yeah, so what's critical to know here first is this climbing arm mechanism. We use surgical tubing to control the extension upwards of this climber, and then we push the we pull down on the chain using these hooks. So the chain goes into the into this hook here, and it's the motion of it is then constrained by the bottom of this hook. From there, we pull down on the chain until we reach the correct height, while also ensuring that we tip inwards towards the stage. Once we're tipping inwards, we can then extend our arm, we can then extend this elevator that we have. We can tilt the launcher forward a little further than our amping configuration and we can score into the trap. So now we're seeing the first part of our climbing stage, which is like feeding the note forward and starting to prepare, I guess, essentially for the climb. Here's when we extend and get into position. Now we're fully pushing down on the chain. And then it just pops out like butter. Well, very cool and very proven effective robot here, but mechanically is only one part of the robot. Let's send it back to Ethan, who's gonna talk to us a little about, about the software that y'all are uh, running on this bot. Yeah, so our philosophy for our team is we only want one driver and our, our like, kind of way of saying it is our software is our human operator. So really when it comes to both mechanical design and software design, this robot is built from the ground up to be as drivable and controllable as possible. And we do this in a bunch of different ways. The, the backbone of a lot of our automation comes from our full field localization. So our team for the past couple of years has been using a particle filter as our localization solution. So the quick summary is we simulate a bunch of particles which represent the robot's pose. As we drive around, we introduce random variation to account for things like wheel slip and other causes of drifts. And as we see vision targets, so we compare the vision input to the particle to see how likely the robot is to be at that position. And as we see the vision target, the particles will condense into one spot and you'll have an accurate pose estimate. So we have a, a demo over here of our particle filter running in an actual mesh. The red particles simulate our pose. This is in our week one competition where we weren't running vision auto. So you'll notice that the, the red dots that simulate the pose are slowly becoming more spread out over time. Red auto just ended. <clears throat> Yeah, and you'll see as soon as Teleop begins, these blue rays come out from the robot. These blue rays symbolize like how the camera is seeing the edges of the April tags, and you'll notice that when we see these rays, the the particles will condense really, really fast. So, the the good part about this setup is that it allows us to get localization on the full field, not just when we're say, for example, scoring. And some examples of where we use this is, for example, we have one button to either aim the robot for a feed or a shot. So. When the driver hits the button, the, the aim button, it looks at our position in the field. If we're behind the midline, it will aim towards our feed shot location and we'll pop the piece right in the same place every time. If we're in front of the line, then we'll run our shot calculator and also start aiming towards the goal. One other cool thing that this uh, localization offers is it's also the backbone of our shot calculator math that allows us to shoot on the fly from around anywhere in the wing. So we're getting the pose estimate from a particle filter and we, we know where the where the goal is and how fast the robot's moving. 
So what we can do is we can combine this with kinematics to figure out how long is the piece gonna take to hit the goal. So once you know that, we'll know, okay, if the arm is at this angle, it'll hit the goal at, oh, it'll be at this much above the goal or this much below the goal. And we can iterate on that to figure out the perfect arm angle to make sure the piece, account, like, the piece lands on the goal. And the same thing is true for our yaw. So combining this, we can get pretty accurate shoe on the fly that's been working well in matches. And we can shoot from arbitrary locations. Just some last things I want to touch on in automation is that the driver really only has like four buttons. There's the aim button I mentioned earlier, the shoot button, which it does a bunch of checks to make sure we're taking feasible shots. For example, the robot isn't moving too fast. We're not in an unreasonable location, stuff like that. So that when I when the driver hits the button, they know that it's going to go in. And also we have some helpful driver feedback. So when we hit the intake button, for example, when it picks up a note, it'll trip a beam brake sensor, give rumble to the driver controller and retract the intake so we know we're ready to go. And this has actually cut, the, cut our cycle times around one second, this driver feedback. Well, very proven, proven effective robot here on Milstein. We can't wait to see what you'll do today and what the rest of Champs has for you. 604 Quicksilver, thank you for taking the time and best of luck to y'all. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.